Let's say we want to know um, whether a, a given compound is going to be a liquid, solid, or a vapor at a given temperature, okay? And maybe we can look up the uh, melting and boiling points of that compound. How would we identify whether it's a solid, liquid, or gas, okay, at, say, uh, 35 degrees Celsius? Well, the first thing that we need to realize is that uh, at the coldest temperatures, um, the substance is going to be in the solid state. And then as you heat it up, okay, at some point it's going to transition from a solid to a liquid. Okay, and then as you continue to heat this up, this would be uh, our increasing temperature there will be another transition from liquid to vapor, or the gas phase, all right? And of course, the transition from solid to liquid is the melting point, all right? When, uh, like for example, when ice melts, ice is the solid, it melts into the liquid water. Alternately, the same, uh, the same point can be looked at from the opposite perspective. Going from a liquid to a solid, the liquid freezes into a solid. So that would be the freezing point, the melting point, the, the same, same point on the uh, temperature scale. All right? And then liquid to vapor, when, um, uh, when you increase the temperature and it vaporizes, we call that the boiling point. All right, so we have the melting point and the boiling point. If, if we know those two points for a substance, we can tell what uh, state of matter it's going to be in at any given temperature, okay? So let's uh, just look at an example. Say we have um, a substance and its melting point is... Uh, negative 25 degrees C, okay? And its boiling point is 28 degrees C, positive, all right? So at 35 degrees C, what state of matter is it gonna be in? Well, anything below negative 25, it's a solid. Between negative 25 and positive 28, it'll be a liquid. Above 28 degrees C, it's going to be a vapor. So at 35 degrees C, it's a vapor. All right? Um, so if we uh, have uh, the boiling point and the melting point for a substance, we can tell whatever state it's going to be at any given temperature. All we have to do is say is, is compare that temperature with the boiling and the melting points. All right, so if we want to know, is this substance a, a liquid at 35? Then um, we say, okay, uh, what would its boiling point have to be? What would its melting point have to be? Okay, if it's going to be a liquid at 35, that would mean uh, we would have our 35 degrees here, okay? This obviously wouldn't be a liquid, but let's uh, change the example. What would I have to have, what kind of a boiling point would I have to have in order for 35 to be within the liquid phase? All right, I'd obviously have to have something greater than 35, right? So let's just uh, change our example here a little bit and make this 38 degrees C, all right? Now 38 degrees C, it's less than... Um, I mean, 35 is less than that boiling point. That means it's still going to be a liquid as long as this uh, melting point is less than 35, okay? Because if my melting point were 36 degrees C, positive 36, then my 35 would be in a solid state, okay? So in, in comparing these, uh, you're just looking at the temperatures, comparing the uh, the given temperature that you're interested in, what state of matter is it going to be at a given temperature, 
you're comparing the boiling points um, with that temperature. If you want to know if it's a liquid at that temperature, then the boiling point must be above that temperature. The melting point must be below it. If you want to know whether it's a solid at that temperature, then both the melting and the boiling point, um, but particularly the melting point, because the boiling point's always going to be above the melting point. But both of those would have to be above that given temperature, right? Um, or if you want to know whether it's a vapor at a given temperature, then the boiling point and consequently the melting point would both have to be below that temperature. So by uh, looking at a table of melting points and boiling points um, and comparing that with a given temperature, you can identify what state of matter um, or what, what compounds in that table will be in a given state of matter. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, just based on the fact that uh, you're progressing from solid to liquid to vapor, that's the progression as you increase the temperature. All right. Um, and uh, related problems um, may deal with density. Um, if you have a, a substance, okay, you've seen the uh, oil and water demonstration. You have two layers in a, in a glass, all right? The top layer has what? Let me make this a little more realistic, all right? So there's our, our glass, and here we have the, uh, on, the, on the top, we have the oil, right? And on the bottom, we have the water. Now, why is the water below the oil? It's because the oil has a, uh, a lower density, okay? The lower density, that means it has less weight for its mass, and so it floats on top of the, the higher density, the one that has the uh, uh, more mass in the same uh, volume. Okay, so this uh, correlation will um, will let you know which which layer to expect on the on the top. Okay, if you know their densities, the one with the lower density will be above the layer with the higher density. Okay, um, and of course, uh, this is assuming that they will not mix. Okay, some uh, solutions, uh, for example, a, uh, a sample of ocean water or a, a, a very um, saturated solution of salt water is more dense than regular water. Okay, so it would sink to the bottom. But the thing is, the water and the salt water will mix. They won't have that layer, and so uh, it may not be that nice uh, even layer like the oil and water. But oil and water don't mix, and since the oil has the lower density, it will come up to the surface. Okay? 